In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to search for, select, and add existing data to the map viewer. You can access the map viewer by clicking on the map link located at the top of the page, or recall that depending on the current extent, these navigation links may appear either just below the word ArcGIS or in a drop-down menu beside the word ArcGIS. So let's go ahead and click on the map link and you enter the map viewer environment. In, in this environment where you can create or edit existing maps, you can also uh, fine-tune uh, how your data are displayed by attribute or uh, symbol properties. Now generally you can you can certainly create a map uh, based on just exploration, trial and error. However, Generally, you approach a map with an idea or topic already in mind. In this demonstration, I'm going to attempt to answer a few questions about the demographics in Arizona and, if possible, the Phoenix metropolitan region. So the first thing I want to do is focus the map on the Phoenix metropolitan region. And, of course, the best way to do that is by entering Phoenix, Arizona in the search window at the top. I can either hit enter or click on the search button to the right. So notice the map zooms in to the Phoenix region. I can go ahead and get rid of my little label here, my pop-up. And so now I'm ready to search for some data. So <clears throat> the add button uh, is where you can find uh, you use the search or you can just find existing layers that you have already. But this is the button that you would use to add any kind of layer to your map document, existing layer. So I can either search for layers, add layer from a web, add layer from file, or add map notes. Well, I don't have a layer from a file. I don't have any files, basically, uh, on, on my local. Um, and I'm not going to go looking out on the web, um, or I have nothing out on the web. So I'm just going to go to search for layers. So notice it defaults to the ArcGIS online environment, in other words, where I'm going to look for data, the in. If I select the drop-down um, list, ArcGIS online is the first selection. I can also go to the web or I can go to a GIS server, um, either an IP address or host name. I can also look in my favorites and, of course, my content. And again, we're just going to look in ArcGIS Online. Since I am going to look at demographic data, the best search that I can use, I'm going to use keywords, um, and uh, so I'm just going to type in census and then population. See what that brings me. I can go ahead and hit go. And notice I had the within map area clicked, selected. That means that generally they're going to look for data that at least occurs within this area. It may or may not be USA-wide um, data, but it does provide information of this region. So I have this, the layers, any layers that matched my search keywords are listed in the results. So I have 456 results. I could try fine-tuning, but you know, I'm just going to kind of go through here and look what I got. So I have some major cities. If I click on this, you can see that it's point data. The preview tells me that the, the structure of the data is vector. And remember, vector is point line or polygon. So these are points. If I look, I've got world population there. I have medium home median home value. That might be an interesting one. Census populated places, again, if I look, it tells me it's polygon. So this is great. So again, polygon is vector data, um, but this covers uh, 2D data. So the summary, US populated place areas represents populated place areas that include census designated places, consolidated cities, and incorporated places. I really don't know what else is included. Um, I'd have to add it to the map document. So let's go ahead and look. So if I add it to the map document, it definitely covers 
the Phoenix area. That's great. That's what I'm looking for. If I click on the, I get a pop-up. So it tells me the housing units. In other words, these are my attributes, my descriptive characteristics. It tells me the population, the housing units, population class, and then my density, right? Population per square mile. So this is uh, actually not bad. I kind of like that. It doesn't cover the entire area. Uh, I'm just interested in these metropolitan areas. So I think I'm going to keep that one. But I'm going to go ahead and add the, um, let's see, where was that? Major cities. There it is. Remember, this is point. So I want to compare these two vector types, right? Points. So this layer represents the locations of cities within the United States with populations of 10,000 or greater. So this is based on 2000, year 2000 census. So it's a little outdated. But again, in this uh, exercise, we could certainly look at it and compare the two um, just by uh, comparing the attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the map document. And notice there's my symbology. So I don't think I could find anything in the results set that would uh, be rep would represent the data, uh, population data, as a linear or a line feature, another vector data type. So I'm going to go ahead and look for waterways, right? So I'm going to look for rivers, just to just to see. Actually, maybe I'll just go ahead and try to zoom in on Arizona. So here we've got the Colorado River Basin area rivers. So that certainly is us. So if I look, this is pretty nice. It definitely is linear data. Uh, major rivers in the Colorado River uh, Basin. So I'm going to go ahead. Not that it's going to offer me any demographic information, but it adds some other information, some linear data to the map. Um, so we can also try canals. Ah, here we have this Maricopa County. So this is a great one too. So we can add that. Yeah, this is great because that's our area of interest. So let's go ahead and add that. And there they are coming up. So I have polygon, point, and vector data added to this map. I can go ahead and hit done adding layers. So remember, I'm not using the Colorado River Basin. So if I click on the more options, the little ellipsis, and I can actually remove that. Now, the system uh, ha layers according to type. So you'll notice that the polygons are on the bottom and then point line features are on top. Because if I put the polygon on top, so let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and move it up. It covers, right, what's ever beneath it. Now, this, if you'll, you'll notice, you can still see it because the transparency is set to probably 50%. So let's look. See the transparency for the polygon, right? Hmm. So if I take it, right? it makes it even more transparent so that you can still see the data underneath. So they obviously have a preset value on that layer. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see the points underneath. So we're going to move the points on top because I prefer to have the points above polygons. And there's the map uh, that with point, line, and polygon features with polygon representing population characteristics. I can actually open the table, show table, and I can actually get an idea of the attributes. Housing units, population, right? We've already looked at this. So I can actually go in and change the symbology by clicking the change style if permissions allow me, right? Right now it's showing on pop class. So what I want is, let's look at population per square mile. 